never liked talking about this story. Lots of boys went to war in 1914 with a smile on their lips. My brother, Willie Angus, was one of them. He was a great footballer, full of life, loved wains. He went out of his way to help folk, wouldn't do you a wrong turn. I watched him grow into a fine young man and march off to war. I was proud of him that day, but I was frightened for him too. I don't think he realised how terrible the trenches would be, how many of the lads around him would die, but he stayed the same boy who would help you out. When another young lad from Kulut got himself stranded in no man's land, it was Willie who tried to save him. He brought that lad back. The king gave him a medal and Willie's life was changed forever. My brother is a hero, but he paid for that medal. This is his story. Is that true? Aye, son, there's somebody say that. So did you, so did you go home with Jerry, you said? Aye, and he gave me a medal. But I was only trying to help a young lad out of trouble. <laughs> Peter, Peter, if you're born in Greece, now would be a good time to hoard it. My captain, it was one of the best moves getting you on the side, Willie. But I tell you though, I'll be sad, as, sad to lose you to the army. But King Country comes first. When the territorial's taken away anyway. I have another week for the mobiliser. So this is my last match. Hi, son. But if you, if you fight the war the way you play the game, you'll have the hunt in the run in jig time. I can't just end today my bits, sir. I am not up for any heroics. A bit of exciting is fine, but I might not even make it out to France. They're saying that I'll all be finished for Christmas, so I might just get to so I could have it in a fine uniform for a while. And impress the lassies. I take what they say with a pinch of salt. The army has a way of holding on to men once it gets them. I remember my brother's wee joint to South Africa to fight the Boers. But enough of that. You lads go get changed. Would you look at that, Willie? That was some clout that big centre half gave you. I don't know how you kept your cool. I wanted to lay him flat. Oh, Kanja, what good would that have done? Had it been half, they'd have got a free kick and walked away with a draw they didn't deserve. You have to keep your cool. Ah, you're right. When you shoot that big lights on, and you done wrong. The donkey might have been six inches taller than you, but who came out the bigger man? <laughs> ah, you float that one through, that's for sure. But what's this old McKenna talking about? You being mustered by the army? I thought you were just playing it so just when you started with territorials. I've taken the king's shilling. I'm away with the age of life for sure. Maybe it's time for a wee adventure. A bit of foreign travel. Like I was saying, it's probably not going to amount to much. And do you care what this about? Have you thought through the fact that maybe you're going out to kill some Germans? Maybe working men like you, Willie? What have they ever done to you? Is this another man in the lecture about socialism you've got to give me, Andrew? I've heard them all before for you. Simple fact is, I have signed on the line. And I'll honour my word. It's the only contract you can walk away if you want to have signed it. And anyway, less of this working man nonsense. I play fit with for a living. Better be 
better than being down the pit. And that's a fact. Aye, well, remember, this is a boss's war. It is not your fight, Willie. Andra, I've no choice. And like I said to McKenna, I'll be back by Christmas. Well, speaking of McKenna, do you know what he was talking about South Africa for? No, I didn't catch a drift of that. His wee brother joined the army during the Boer War. He was one of Hunter's mass at the Sion Corp. They were led into some useless position by some daft off of a general. They were shot to pieces by the boss who surrounded them in the night. I'm surprised you can't remember it. It was all of the papers when they were at school. The papers and the news and public meetings in your business, Andrew. I like a bit of action. Oh, I know you do, you big dafty. But mind, that kind of action will take a bit more out of you than that chunk of flesh the centre half helped them sell out of the day. Oh, anyways, time for a wash. Race you to the bath. <laughs> Granddad and your uncle back. But I want to see them, Mammy. You'll see them later. I'll wait at the new. Hi, Dad. The Carlock Island Light Infantry would 40 pieces if I wasn't there to march up with them in the morning. Still the Joker, I see. You'll be needing that sense of humour when you get to the front. I wish we'd join you there, son. But I think my fighting days are well and truly out. <sighs> that was a day when I would have been a pretty useful soldier. Is it not enough that he's away the morrow without you coming out with your nonsense? It's fine, Margaret. My father's all trying to make us all feel a bit better here. Besides, it'll be a wee jaunt to France. I'll only have time to drink a glass of wine, kiss a lassie, and catch the train home. There you go, hen. You see, it'll be a doddle for our lad. Don't tell your sister, son. This will warm you on your way. All oh, the boys, their poor mothers, my poor wee brother. Do you like it? Aye, it's smashing. Celtic are the best team next to Wishy Thistle. Are you going to be a soldier now, Uncle Willie? That's right, wee man. Yeah. I'll be a soldier for a wee while anyway. See if you don't come back for the war. Can I get your fit worship then? <laughs> See you, wee Torag. You've got me dead and buried before I get through the front door. Right, wee man. You better surrender right away. Come on, get those hands in the air. Don't move an inch, soldier, or you're a dead man! Ha! <laughs> right, wee man. You can look after this when we will arm away. Hey. Right? No, your son. Let me take that back for you. That'd be fine, Father. You've always been a great man for helping me out. Mm. 
Right. I'll allow you this. See you outside, son. Well, that's me out, Margaret. Ready for the off. Hi, Willie. So you be sure to look after yourself. I'm wanting my brother back. No hero wee story in the paper. Margaret, why do I keep telling you? Most likely this isn't going to become a big war. Aye. You lost his sense. And I'll be back before he realises. Maybe you'll be right about it, Willie. You might be right. Anyway, Private Angus, let's get you out there. Attention! to see my brother marching tall and proud down that road. It's no every day in Kulik that's given away a brother the day. Just remember, I want you back home again. It's a fine body of young men I've to send off to war, Mrs Martin. Good damn, Mr McKenna. I believe some of the young men are acquainted with you. Aye, madam. A good number of those boys were played in my team. In point of fact, I'm losing my team captain to this wee enterprise. In this time of crisis, we all must make some sacrifice. True. Very true, madam. And what of you, sir? Do you think you'll be joining them yourself? Aye. Aye. James will be joining his regiment in the very near future. Good day to you, Mr McKenna. It's good to know that all of our young men are going to be fighting this together. Good day to you. Are you sure about this, Willie? They're leaving your team in the lots here. Kim Shillin has already spent. I have to go, mate. We've seen you at training again soon, though. Get yourself in that train, Angus. You're a real soldier now. this has been. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you too, Anne. What's bringing you into the tune? Oh, I've some new things for me, Fred. Some things for my daddy. I've been running around town all day. What about you, Hen? I'm up looking for a job in one of the factories. I've got to do my bit for the war effort, you know. Oh, I, did, I didn't realise you were in their homebody. Mm. Well, we'll see. I need to do my bit, as I said. How's that brother of yours, Willie, getting on? Ah, oh, funny you should ask. He's fine. Just get a letter, in fact. He was working on that coastal defence duty, which I was all in favour of as it kept him well out of harm's way, but... Mm. Well, the letter told us he was being shipped out to France. None of the boys look like they're being back any time soon. Never mind Christmas. Aye. He's such a strong boy, your Willie. He'll be alright. I hope so, Annie. But have you seen the, the last uh, casualties on the papers? Mm. They're getting longer every week. I know, but as I said, he's that strong and quick. Any German that threatens him, they'll know all about it. Uh, maybe you'll be right. Bang, bang, you're both dead!
Right cough language. Am I correct in stating that Mr. Martin did not make it back from the raid last night? Aye, sir. The only man from the raiding party who got back here was Private Sutter. Indeed. Let's have the lad here to find out what he knows about the whereabouts of Mr. Martin then. Private Sutter. Mr. Name would like a word with you. We're making our way through the German wire, sir. Right quiet, like. Mr. Mr. Martin was doing his usual, you know, like, in amongst everyone, helping the lads with the wire cutters. There was this bloody explosion right in front of us. Oh, they were screaming and they were shouting. And the Germans were holding up, we couldn't hate and machine gun fire. Oh, there's another three to eat, another soldiers around. Thank you. So, you're dismissed. Not a good night, no a pretty sight, Corp Langus, but we have what we need. Make sure that. Private Sir gets a wee rest, his information confirms our fears. Mr. Martin did not make it back from the raid last night. More sappers had mined the front line. God only knows how much explosive they used. Probably had that bloody bang back home. I don't think we'll be seeing him today or anytime soon. Dad! Lanyard he just moved! There! Up the hung line. Just down the roll up the crater. Mr. Martin, maybe. Dear God. That's the worst Martin I've ever met in my life. <coughs> What's Potter Angus? We're heading back to the command post. Send Sir! Is anyone up there? No. Are we to leave Mr. Martin out there? That is the case, Angus. Although there's no more good men today if it can be avoided. Hi, sir. Water. For the love of God, someone give me some water. Blink it decent, Tommy! Johnny, how about you be my runner? Get to the command post and let Captain Aaron know that Mr. Martin is definitely alive. That the hunter tried to stick the nades at him. Ask if I have permission to go out there are and bring you, him back. Are you daft? <sighs> Why? Honestly, you're tough. Just thought we were thinking of us as a big stupid game. We better a laugh, right? I'll tell you one thing. See, it was your backside out right there. He wouldn't be going to to save you. Come on, Johnny. I kind of disagree with you. But I can't sit here and listen to that. Tell your son as well. Remind me of my pal Andrew back here. He's a rebel type. Mouthy, like you. So I, Martin is a top. But he's a bigger look. A how do I walk through the tune after this? What do I say when his mother and father asks? Did you see him die? Did you try to help him? An answer. Oh aye, I saw your son. But I'll let the Huns use him for the target practice until he was bled dry. So that's it then. You're going to throw your life down the pan or some tough. What is he to you? What's the point? See the day? Carlux is my country. That's about as much sense as only this makes. Would you just do what I asked you and take the message to Captain Nairn? Aye, right then. Johnny, what did we do for a minute? I'm away myself. General Menzies, sir. A pleasure to see you. Thank you, Captain Nairn. I read about your report about the mine and the raiding party. I wanted to come and take a look at things for myself. I heard we lost young James Martin in the raid too. Well, not quite, sir. Reliable over reports of place Martin in no man's land. He was pinned down by Bosch Crossfire and they are taunting us by lobbing the odd grenade near him. Poor chap. Nothing we can do for him? If it were feasible, I'd lead the party myself, sir, but the casualties from last night have decimated us. If we lose more men, we would not be in effective fighting yet. Besides, sir, it would not be right to ask. Corporal Angus requesting permission to speak to Captain Nairn, sir. Ends up. I 
Hi, he's Cork Langus. I suspect you're picking up the earlier thread of our conversation. You've seen General Menzies before, I take it? Aye, sir. Um, I would like permission to bring back Mr Martin. I'm reluctant to allow this, Angus. We've lost too many good men in the last day. With the greatest respect, sir, I'm not leaving a fellow colloquial man out there. I'd be bringing a good man back. You're aware, my boy, you're going to certain death? Sir, we're oddied in the long run. I'm no fussed about the time. Might as well get it done the day. So be it, Corporal. There is always a chance. Captain Nairn, arrange what you can in the way of covering fire. Anyway. Take this, my boy. Have a sniff to yourself and make sure Lieutenant Martin has a drink too. All the best, my boy. Private right, sir, do you have the rope? You organise some covering fire, Corporal Angus. Can the boss keep his head down, eh? Aye, sir. If you could have I don't know, the max is like about 50 years to the train train. Maybe I might weigh up the plank. Might get to Mr. Martin unseen. I'm going to risk attack the Kangas, but I see your point. Covering fire on my altar! Yes, sir! I told you before, I'm not leaving him. That's it. Hi. That's it. See you later. Good luck, Willie. Right, Willie. Right, Willie, there's such a way there. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Pure radio sunshine. That's what you are. Stretch your bearers! Stretch your bearers! Stretch it! Stretch your bearers! Major Blood! Cop Angus 
is gaining consciousness. Hmm. Yes. Good to see our hero has finally come around. If he hadn't come round, be a considerable waste of bandages and bedpans. Still, all swell turns well, eh, matron? We are... Uh, um. Where am I, Corporal? They all ask that, don't they, matron? Would you like to tell our hero where we are? Corporal Angus, you're in the Caster Cleaning Station. You've been conscious for quite a while. You've been very, very, even very strong. I'm delighted to see you start to recover. Delighted indeed, young man. Here. The bloody boss shot you to bits, you know. Got you everywhere except your bollocks. You're fully functional in the family department. What the Major is trying to tell you, Corporal, is that you have over 40 separate wounds, and 13 of them are serious. Quite serious. You had more German steel in you than I've ever seen. Spent an absolute age picking it out of you on the operating table. Didn't think you'd make it. Fully expected you to be Corporal Willie Angus, VC Posthumous. Must you be so morbid and so flippant, Major? Why, yes. Yes, I must, Matron. A little dark humour lightens the day for everyone. Oh, it's humour, is it? Yeah, well, one does one's best. Easy. Posthumous. We didn't think you'd live long enough to be sentenced with the Victoria Cross. Now, Major, I believe you have rounds to complete. For valour, young man. Highest award one could be given in the army. We're all quite proud of you over here, really. Your rounds, Major Blunt. I'll have Nurse Blake take a look at some of his dressing and make him more comfortable. Have you seen the latest batch of bell citations, my dear? I trust you're referring to the citation for the Victoria Cross. This young corporal, the Scotsman. What does his name again? William Angus, darling. Lost his wounded officer back through the nervous lad. He got himself shot to pieces in the process. A remarkable young man. Indeed, it would be delight to have him at the palace, of course, but a little comfort in the meantime may be appropriate, even if it is only a small token. Big pardon, dear? Oh, I've arranged to send him a small gift. The poor boy. Forty wounds in his flesh. So much pain. An equal agony for his family, I imagine. Big pardon, dear? Oh, nothing. Just me musing aloud. Sleeping better last night. Managed a wee bit of sleeping. Thanks for asking. We hear to say about the bandages again. Has to be done. If we keep them clean, then we can stop the infection. It's not that it's that sore. I just don't like looking at it. I know, Willie. I know. But you're so brave for no man's land. You need to have some of that bravery for now, for yourself. It was some sight that day. The front line is standing between a pit thing and a slaughterhouse. I see the faces of some of the lads, you know. I see them when I'm dreaming. You need to look to yourself, Willie. And I mean no disrespect, but you need to leave the dead behind. Anyway, what's a pit bang? Well, seeing you're no know, a lassie for Lanarkshire. Mm -hmm. It's where all the slag and waste for the coal mines and the steel plants get dumped. Huge heaps of rubble. Some of it's still smoking away. No very nice. And no much different for the land. And no man's land. We certainly have the capability to turn our green and pleasant land into something close to hell on earth. Aye, it's a different world, hen. And no always pretty. Wouldn't he find getting back home to it, though? I'd take a view of a pit bang any day. As long as the bullets and bombs weren't flying about. Mind you, hen, that lovely face of yours could turn hell into heaven any day. Just with a wee glance. Ah, uh, turn on the charm, charm, Corporal Angus. You're either on the road to recovery, or just trying to stop me from changing these bandages. So, let's have a look at them. <sighs> Corporal Angus, I'm afraid we have some bad news for you. 
We had a look at your eye when we were changing the dressings and we couldn't save it. It's unlikely you'll regain sight in it again. Thank you, sir. I'm cured for trying only ways. That's the spirit, I guess. I'll just leave the big day with the one. Billy, don't give up. You've done so well. Look, there's some letters and parcels from home. Why don't we have a look at them? I was wondering, Rose, if you could do me a wee favour. I saw the letters and parcels there, but... I need a bandage on my eye. I'm really feeling a bit tired. Would you like me to read them for you, Willie? I could like you to help out. Aye, if you would not mind saying. Let's see. This first one is from... Isabel. Oh, Margaret. That's my big sister. Go on. What is she saying? My dear brother, I hope this letter finds you as well as can be expected. We thought the worst when the telegram came. Your father wouldn't open it, and it sat next to the big clock on the mantelpiece until I came round with Fred to help with the dinner. When we opened it and saw that you were wounded, it was a relief to know you were alive. There were more and more telegraphs and officers from the army and men from the press. They were so proud of you being a VC. Everybody in Curlock stops us and asks how you are and tells us that what you did made the whole place proud. The whole family are glad you saved the Martin boy and we all just want you home safe and well. Wee Fred says that he's still going after your football strip but thinks that being a soldier is better now. I told him to ask you what you thought of that when you got home. Best regards, your big sister. Margaret. Hi. She's some lassie who's my big sister. That way lad Fred is a cracker as well. I'll need to put that this idea of being a soldier, mind you. There's another letter and a parcel here. Would you like me to open this one? Goodness. This looks official. Gracious Willie! This is a personal note from the Queen. What? You're kidding me, you know it's... I'll read it out to you. My dear Corporal Angus, My husband and I have been reading about the heroic steps you took to save the life of a fellow soldier. Your brave deed filled us both with admiration. The sacrifice you made and the suffering you continue to endure fills us both with a sense of pride and humbles us when we think of the great pain our soldiers suffer in this war. We will of course be attending Buckingham Palace to receive your Victoria Cross. <laughs> but in the meantime, please accept this small gift which may go some way to making your recovery more comfortable. Yours sincerely, Mary Windsor. A personal note from the Queen, Willie. What an honour. Hi, you're right there, Hen. Go and open that parcel then. Pajamas. <laughs> Visitor for you, Angus. Young chap, you went to so much trouble for. Where are those citations today, my dear? Are those the citations for the Victoria Cross? The young Scots Scotsman has certainly attracted a crowd. Indeed he has. Your equerries informed me that the young man's father is outside at the gates in the crowd. What? How preposterous! You must be brought in immediately for the presentation. I have sent your equerry to get young Corporal Angus's father. Oh, I can always rely on you, my dear. Yes, George, you can. It's good to see you, son. 
I always thought one of these days you'd be winning a medal, but I always thought it'd be for the football. Now look at you. Aye, Vader. Some place you're out of. Aye. Sir, the ceremony is about to start. May I accompany you, may I accompany you to your seat in the hall? Aye, sir. Lead on. I'll see you in there, Wally. For most conspicuous bravery and devotion to duty on Givenchy on 12th of June 1915, and involuntarily leaving his trench under very heavy bombing rifle fire and rescuing a wounded soldier who was lying within a few yards of the enemy's position. Lance Corporal Angus had no chance whatever of escaping the enemy's fire undertaking this very gallant action. And in effect in the rescue, he sustained about 40 wounds from bombs, some being very serious. Lord Corporal Angus, for your right of valour, we introduce you to the Victoria Cross. Well done, my boy. Such, such, such service you have done for your country. I mean, 40 wounds I hear. The pain must be intolerable. Aye, sir. But only 13 of them were serious. <laughs> And, right, and, Mr. Angus, your son is a brave man, a truly brave man indeed. I'm glad to see that his sense of humour is still intact. Angus, some reception they've put on, eh? You think the entire country's glad to have you back? To have you both back? Maybe have a few words, sir, and a photograph. Ah, yes. Great to see young women helping out with the war efforts. Do you have any words from Miss um, the Corporal Angus, Mr. Martin? In my view, it was an act of bravery, second to none, in the, in the, in the annals of the British Army. I owe you my life, Lily. Really. I'll never forget that day. Anything for the boy to look, sir. Could have found the phone to the hospital. Ah, son. You're looking better every time I see you. You're keeping a bit of fine company as well. I hate that. Kings and lordship and all sorts. But I'll never lose the common touch. Right there, wee brother. We'll make sure of that. And maybe you hadn't believed that you'd only have time to kiss a French lassie and have a wee glass of wine before you were came again. What a mess they've made you, my wee brother. Still, you're back. And very nearly in one piece as well. <sighs> Here, I thought I'd see Big Andrew the day. Is he out there? He joined up, Lily. Said he couldn't let you out there on your own. There was a telegram sent to his house last night. He isn't coming home. Uncle Lily, can I get to your medal? Hi, wee man, that's with him. I'm going to be a soldier just like you, Uncle Lily. Well, Fred, being a soldier is good, but you know what's better? 
being a captain or a general or a king maybe. No, we man. Name me name. I don't know then, Uncle Billy. Did I ask you to look after something for me? I am Uncle Billy, your fitbit jersey. My mum made me take good care of it. Good lads. There you are, wee man. A wee look at a Victoria Cross for you. It's not very shiny. Look at the gold. Well, there you are, Fred. That's your medals for you. Right. I want you out and play with that. A young lad that likes his butter. What do you say we go bend the kitchen, make ourselves a wee piece, and have a nice wee cup of tea? Grand. Oh, oh dear me. <laughs> So, my brother made it back, and we were proud of them. Plenty of other lads didn't come home though. Tens of thousands of them left lying in the cold, cold earth of France and Flanders, and wherever else they shipped those boys to fight and die. Willie lost so much that day. Half his foot shot away, blinded in one eye. No much mere fit but for him. He did get to appear before huge crowds though. The army paraded him in front of the fans at Ibrox and Parkhead. They thought it would be good for recruitment. He hated those days. But he did make a friend. Lieutenant Martin. The Kerluk lad he saved. Never forget what Willie had done. Every year, on the anniversary of saving Martin, a telegram of thanks arrived. Willie appreciated that wee thing. The VC stayed in the drawer. <laughs>